I was watching the news this morning, CBS this morning, and there was this story that came over uh, about medical tourism. It really got my attention. Uh, the, the story focused on this one man that decided to go to Panama to have dental implants put in. Was told that it was going to cost around $27,000 or so if it was done in the States. But as he was visiting in Panama, he finds out, well, this is going to be done for, what, $7,000. That's a tremendous savings. So then he's looking into the um, the. the type of facility that it is and how good a quality it is and finds out that oh my goodness these facilities down there they're affiliated with hospitals like Johns Hopkins University and the Cleveland Clinic and the doctors many of them are trained physicians back here in the states that are operating down there that are w working there uh, great medical care and they can do it for a fraction of the cost so I'm thinking my goodness I wonder how many people are actually taking advantage of stuff like this. And then as we're concerned about the continual cost of care, and it continues to go up and up and up, is there going to be more of an opportunity for people to take advantage of this on their own? And what about the idea of employers and insurance companies offering incentives to people to actually go overseas to have treatments done. Well, with us to talk about all of those possibilities is the CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. His name, Jonathan Edelheit, and he joins us now on the 84 Lumber Project Professionals Newsline. Jonathan, welcome to KDKA. Good to have you on. Thanks for having me on. I'll tell you what, this has really, really uh, gotten my attention, especially in light of uh, Obamacare and the focus of out-of-pocket expenses. And it seems as though more and more uh, there are going to be people, whether it's through the Obamacare exchanges or even with private insurance companies through employers, the, the idea of the individual picking up more of the cost of the care where all of a sudden something like this becomes more and more of a reality. Yes, and it's not just um, them having to pick up more out-of-pocket expenses. I think people are starting to see the first signs within the exchanges of the cost of insurance also for individuals or even for employers starting to increase. So now people are kind of getting a double hit with more out-of-pocket expenses and higher insurance premiums. Yes. So it, take us back. When did the idea of medical tourism start? Um, medical tourism, obviously, you know, in a, in a rudimentary form, has been going on for hundreds of years as people travel to thermal spas or things like that. But I would say back in about 2003 and 2004 is where it really started here in the United States with more Americans starting to travel and some of the first um, insurance plans starting to cover people to travel overseas. And then over the last couple of years, as healthcare costs have increased, and more Americans have become aware of healthcare overseas, and I think the internet has a lot to do with that and word of mouth. Um, you know, a lot of Americans now are much more aware that there's very high quality options at very affordable prices overseas, and so there's a much more of an acceptance now. What dominated the procedures? Was it elective cosmetic procedures that really drove the medical tourism up to this point? Yeah, in the beginning, it was very, uh, for Americans leaving the United States, it was very cosmetic driven. People were going for bariatric surgery, plastic surgery, uh, breast implants, dental procedures. And it has changed over the last three to four years, where now we're seeing a large trend of Americans going overseas for major procedures like orthopedics, hips, knees, backs, even heart procedures and transplants. Why is it so much less expensive to have a medical procedure done overseas? Is it as simple as the same formulas that apply to why it's cheaper to manufacture goods overseas or to have people work at call centers overseas? You know, it, 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 that's, that's one of the factors. Um, you know, it's obviously lower labor costs. Uh, a, big, a big part of it is medical, medical malpractice. Um, you know, uh, there was no tort reform with health, the health care reform law. And, you know, Gallup determined that about 26% of medical costs in the U.S. are for doctors performing defensive medicine. Um, so there's a lot of factors in the U.S. as to why our costs are higher. But it's really amazing because, um, you know, a U.S. manufacturer of, like, a knee implant mm -hmm. will go ahead and sell that here in the U.S. for $15,000 but they might sell that same implant in India for $3,000. And 
you can go get the same prescription drugs. I have a colleague who, when they travel overseas, they've gotten their asthma inhaler for as little as a dollar, where with Blue Cross Blue Shield here in the U.S., they're paying $25 with their copay. So why a huge disparity. And why is there this disparity? Um, a lot of it, I think, is, you know, some of it has to do with profits from medical supply and pharmaceutical companies. Um, the, the other part is just health care costs are kind of out of control here in the United States, and nothing is being done to try to rein them in and make them more affordable. Do I understand correctly that in some countries there are caps of what these companies are able to charge for certain medications and pieces of equipment? Uh, yeah, overseas, the, the pricing is, is literally, literally maybe 50 to 90 percent of what it is here in the United States. And, and it's dictated by governments, or is it just the free market over there is operating differently than the free market over here? It, it's, all, it's all free market, um, well, especially for medical tourists, because they're going to private hospitals. No, I, I mean, so the, I mean the, 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 the devices manufactured and the, the drugs that are sold. Um, that is that, that is more of a free market, meaning that you know there's there's no in most of the places there's no regulation that says they have to charge this price for them. They're just much more affordable overseas. It doesn't it cause you to scratch your head that if it's open market and the same market applies in Panama or India or Israel or wherever as it does here, that we're stuck paying a whole lot more than they're paying over there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's extremely unfair, and I think that in some cases we're subsidizing the cost of what people are paying overseas, or we're subsidizing someone else's profits, because um, we're paying more as Americans than everyone, everywhere else in the world. Yeah, when you think about what we're subsidizing as Americans, I mean, right now, Americans are subsidizing the care given to people who don't have insurance right now as they go to emergency rooms, and then we pay in the cost of higher insurance premiums, or we pay in the cost of higher taxes uh, to give the dollars ultimately to the hospitals, or we pay in the idea that we lose medical facilities that are providing treatments and they just aren't being paid, so we have many hospitals around the country that have closed. And now you're telling me that we subsidize medical care all over the world, and it's coming out of our own back pockets. Yeah, and you know, what, one of the things that you mentioned earlier was you have hospitals that are, you know, managed and run by um, U.S. hospitals but overseas, like Johns Hopkins in Panama, um, or, you know, Cleveland Clinic in Abu Dhabi. So, you know, you have these facilities run by top U.S. hospital centers of excellence that you can go overseas to that facility and get your care for 50 to 90 percent less than here, and you may very well might be getting the same U.S you know, implant like a hip or knee and even being treated by a surgeon who was trained in the United States. Interesting. Okay, so much of it about cosmetic surgery in the past, but more and more, there are insurance companies working hand-in-hand -hand with employers, uh, enticing their workers that when it comes to getting medical treatment done, to actually go overseas and take advantage of this. We're going to talk more and more about that. Right now, we're discussing this with Jonathan Edelheit. He is the CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. More with him just moments away. News Radio 1020, KDKA. Good evening, I'm Angino. Good to have you here this evening. We are joined tonight by Jonathan Edelheit. He is the CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. I was watching CBS this morning, and a really interesting story about a man deciding to go to uh, Panama to get dental implants done, where he was given a price in the States of around $27,000, was able to get it done there for about $7,000. And not only just the procedure done, but the treatment that he received down there, much more involved care than what we receive uh, back here. Uh, Jonathan, what I was really struck by was that here, you go in, you get a procedure done, major surgery done, you're out of the hospital in a day or two, you have one nurse that's responsible for who knows 8 10 12 20 people or whatever but the procedure that he received down there he was getting personal care from one nurse devoted to him was able to stay once he was released from the hospital at a very nice resort that was working in tandem with the hospital and then you have doctors that actually make rounds and visit patients on a regular basis ensuring that they're getting quality care 
It is, it is really amazing. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, people don't realize, too, is that if you're getting a procedure done here in the United States, you don't even know what that cost is. They won't even tell you. And you could get hit with a lot of extra fees, um, where when you go to a country like Panama, you're getting a fixed price that you know covers everything, the surgery, the doctor, the nurses, the aftercare. And the personalized care that you receive there uh -huh. is a lot of times like you're in a five or six star hotel and you're getting your own private room, your own private nurse, and people rave about being treated like their family. Wow. Uh, going back to the issue of the, uh, the cost, about definitively knowing about what you're going to pay there as compared to here, uh, why is it so hard, if not impossible, to actually get a hard figure of what something is going to cost you here? Because hospitals in the United States have a really hard time of being transparent. And they don't want to show people what the cost is. And that's going to make them have to be more competitive and compete with other hospitals. What's very interesting is medical tourism has actually forced some U.S. hospitals over the last two years to start actually giving fixed pricing. Um, but the hospitals are very res resistant to it. Um, and, and just that is why so many patients love going overseas is they don't, they don't have to worry about what it's going to cost. They know what it is. Do you, I'm guessing your position is that, that medical tourism is going to expand. What do you think is going to be the catalyst to this? Do you think it will be uh, employers trying to get their employees to go and travel overseas? Will it be the enticement given by insurance companies to get people to travel outside the country for medical treatment? Or just the desire of individuals to want to save money in the process, too? What do you see this being as the driving force behind it? I think, I think the driving force that will happen in the next 12 to 24 months is more employers and insurers implementing it and giving incentives to employees to travel. So we have a member of our association, uh, HSM, and they're a uh, manufacturing company out of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And you know they just went on the record for the first time that for the past five years, they sent a 250 employees overseas and saved $10 million for their company. And whenever one of their employees would travel overseas, they would cover for airfare, hotel, all the travel expenses, waive deductible co-insurance, all out-of-pocket expenses, and give that employee a $2,500 check afterwards. Um, and that $2,500 check, uh, you know, is something that was very powerful and meaningful to the employees, and their program is extremely successful. And I think as we see more employers and insurers adopt that, mm -hmm. um, you know, more people are going to be willing to travel. Okay, you went through that pretty fast. I want you to go through that again, just to make sure everybody got it, including me, of what the incentive is that the insurance companies and the employers are giving to individuals to receive treatment overseas. It is that you don't have any out-of-pocket expenses. So if you had to get your care locally here in the United States and you had a deductible and coinsurance or any out-of-pocket, that, that is eliminated. Um, the employer or the insurance company covers it. Then they pay for all your travel expenses, your airfare, your hotel, your food, um, all medical expenses while you're away. And then after the procedure, they write you a check for $2,500. Wow. Now, are, are they mandating that their employees take this, or is this an option for them to choose? It's, to it's totally optional. So if someone doesn't want to travel overseas, they don't have to. But over the past five years, they had 250 of their employees choose to go abroad and to receive that benefit. And that's really significant because for that procedure, that person, if they got it here in the United States, might have had to pay five or $7,000 out of pocket mm -hmm. um, with their deductible and co-insurance. So now that's not only gone, they've taken care of that, but they're giving them a check. Uh, what assurances are being given to the employees that the facility that they're going to is a top-notch facility that may have some type of affiliation similar to the ones with Johns Hopkins or with the Cleveland Clinic, and they're not going to some low-rate medical facility? Um, well, they're, they're, they're choosing hospitals that are top centers of excellence around the world. And then specifically in this case with this one employer, it was JCI accredited hospital. So here in the United States, the Joint Commission accredits the majority of the hospitals. And they have an international arm called JCI, which accredits international hospitals. 
Um, so that's the first step, is making sure there's some kind of international accreditation. Mm-hmm. And then the second is looking at the actual physician um, and their credentials and experience. All right, we talked about the incentives to doing this. What concerns are there? What's the downside to going and having a medical procedure done overseas? What's the risk? Um, you know, one, one of the downsides is you're away from your family. Um, most employers and insurance companies also pay the expenses for you to bring a loved one with you, but you're still away from family. And it is medical care, so complications could, can happen. Um, you know, hopefully they won't because you're going to a top center of excellence and a top uh, surgeon, but they do happen. And if that complication happens, you, you know, you're going to be abroad while it's being taken care of. And I think the other really big um, issue that people have to accept is, you know, health care costs are lower overseas because they don't have the crazy medical malpractice laws we have here. So if something does happen, you have very limited recourse in bringing any kind of a lawsuit against a surgeon um, if they commit malpractice. But having said that, you know, 99.9% of all American patients that I talk to who make that choice to go overseas, the medical malpractice issue doesn't even come into their mind because they just want the best care from the best surgeon at the most affordable price. Okay, when you talked about initially, you go overseas, you get treatment done, and there is an issue, and that you say that you need to stay there until ultimately you're uh, brought back to your fullness of health. Uh, all of those costs are taken care of as well for whatever length of time you need to be there in order to uh, recover properly. Yes, if you're if you're covered through your insurance company or employer, yes, you know it's totally covered. If you're a cash paying patient and paying on your own, it's not covered. You will have to pay for those complications, but also you have to remember they're going to be fifty to ninety percent less um, than here in the U.S. And there are a couple insurance companies that actually offer complication insurance for Americans traveling abroad that will cover the cost of complication. All right. Now, you mentioned also the the issue of lawsuits, completely different overseas as compared to here. Um, Where something here goes wrong, you may be able to get a million-dollar judgment. Uh, but if something over outside the country goes wrong, are you looking at nothing? Are you looking at tens of thousands instead, hundreds of thousands instead of millions? Uh, what can you pretty much run as a rule of thumb? It really is going to vary by country to country, you know, but my advice is, is going to be, you know, there's a chance you could get nothing. And, you know, at the okay. most, you might get 50000 up to $100,000, but in a lot of those, these countries, that is very rare. That's, that's the, you know, a very big settlement in that country. Interesting. Do you know of people who have said no as a result of that? Uh, no. Uh, I really haven't. I'm sure there are some people who have uh-huh. made that decision. Okay. Everybody I've talked to, when they find out the expertise of their surgeon um, and how many surgeries he's done and his background and talk to other patients, okay. they're all committed to go. Uh, do me a favor. Hold on right there. Jonathan Edelheit is my guest. He's a CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. And we're talking about just that, going overseas, outside the country, to get medical treatments done. It looks as though it's going to be something that's going to be occurring more and more as time goes by. More with him just moments away. Uh, Right now, we are talking about medical tourism, the idea of going outside the country to get a medical procedure done. Uh, We are talking about this with the CEO of Medical Tourism Association, Jonathan Edelheit, and uh, we are taking your phone calls as well, 866-391-1020, dollar bank instant access at kdka.com. Um, I realize that as you're advancing this, should there be a concern that the American people would have that with this competition from overseas for medical treatment, that there is going to be a negative impact on jobs uh, that are tied into the medical profession, nursing, doctors, uh, support staff at many hospitals around the country? Do you see that as a potential downside? I don't really see that as a downside because we're now in a global world and our our association also works with U.S. hospitals who are bringing a lot of international patients into our country. So it's a big ebb and flow and international patients coming into the country provide a big economic stimulus for the the United States too. Why would they come here? Considering There's people who come here because they feel the United States has the best care in the world 
and they're willing to pay to get that best care. Okay. So they look at U.S. care being, I don't know, like uh, um, you know, the, the Mercedes Benz, and they're willing to spend the money in order to come here and get that. Exactly, okay. yes. All right. Uh, Elaine in Bellevue, good evening, everyone, KDKA. Yeah, hi, man, Gina. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, I'm going to Israel for a stem cell transplant, so I'm raising money since last year. It has been slow going because I am older. i got diabetes of three and a half, been through the transplant system for 28 years, had a kidney uh, for eight years that died, got a kidney and pancreas. Uh, pancreas died after 14 years, and the kidney is still working really well. It's like my creatinine is point, uh, 1.1. My question to you is, uh, I know the economy has been bad, but because I got sugar when I was younger, like in 1959 when they knew little about it, and then to be, I'm going to be 58 this year, so I've had it 55 years, and I don't look like I'm sick. You know, how do I help get funding to go to Israel for this transplant? Uh, the doctor I'm going to is, um, he's been doing stem cell transplants since 1986. He's got, he has a worldwide wide reputation. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, any ideas? Um, do, do you have health insurance now? With, yes, with we will cover company? it because um, they, they, we don't have codes yet you know, to do this. I'll be using my own stem cells. They'll be mixed with um, uh, cord blood and tissue factors, and I'll be using acoustic wave therapy to drive them to the place where I need them because I have five blockages in my heart. And, um, you know, I can't get, you know, the okay. treatment done here because I won't do bypass. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, if, if it's not covered under your policy here, the only thing I could say is if you kind of reach out to our organization, we could okay. reach out to the facility overseas in Israel and see if there's, you know, something that we can help to um, work out that process for you. Right. Okay, it, yeah, I have to stay for two weeks because it's going to extract my cells okay. and then do all this other stuff. And then I have to have it uh, put back into an IV every other day for two weeks. Right. Hey, Elaine, do me a favor. Hold on right there. Jonathan, what is the best way for her to get a hold of you? Uh, it can be called at 561-791-2000, uh, or um, you could email us at um, info at medicaltourismassociation.com, all, all spelled out. Very good. Elaine, best of luck to you on this. Jeff in Memphis, good evening, everyone, KDKA. Hi, listen, I, I was just thinking that, you know, everybody's complaining that there needs to be tort reform, and I don't disagree. But is part of it, your your discussion about 10 minutes ago, is part of it the low risk of high court judgments uh, and medical or malpractice insurance part of the reason the fees are lower? It, it is one of the reasons. Um, it's, it's a big reason why it's lower. Yes. I was about to say, how it, it, is, it, is it a marginal size reason or is it a material size reason I think it's it's a very it's a very significant percentage um, like I like I was saying earlier it's, I think it's, uh, 26 percent of medical costs in the US are estimated to be specifically because of potential for medical malpractice and it's a very large number yeah Jeff thank you very much Jonathan the point that you make regarding uh, defensive medicine and how that accounts for upwards of a quarter of all medicine that is uh, all procedures that are conducted you you run that along with the high cost of just malpractice insurance that doctors have to carry that hospitals have to carry and, and now you're pushing you know I, I wouldn't be surprised if you know total 30% of all expenses uh, associated with either tests that otherwise wouldn't necessarily need to be done if it wasn't for the potential for lawsuits and then the insurance cost of dealing with those lawsuits. Yeah, the cost of insurance for doctors here in the U.S. is very expensive and there's been a lot of stories of doctors leaving states or leaving their practice because they no longer can afford that coverage. How does... What can I do if I'm willing to go and explore the possibilities of traveling overseas in order to get a procedure done that would ultimately save my company, CBS, my insurance provider, uh, a lot of money? Is, is there anything that I can do on my end to get them to be open to the idea of covering expenses outside the country as compared to here? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you know, if you want your employer or your insurance company to offer this coverage and, and to provide incentives, um, you know, you can always have them reach out to our organization, the Medical Tourism Association, and we can kind of provide them the information on the quality and the hospitals that are out there and the information they need to implement this um, and to do it in a way that works. Where where are we now at this point? You mentioned the, the company HSM and what they've done with their employees and how much money they've saved. How much is this being watched and being observed by other companies and other insurance providers? Uh, do you see this picking up more quickly as uh, the years go by? I mean, what's going to come as a result of what we see here with HSM? Uh, I, I think that's going to be, be a big catalyst. I think I think people, you know, employers, insurance companies, and everyone watching that will will see that this isn't something that someone just experimented with. It, it's a real case study where they see over five years of savings and the quality outcomes, and it's going to build the confidence to look into actually doing this. And there's other insurance companies that are doing this, like Cigna, um, that you know it's just not publicly um, talked about. So I think we're going to see this industry, you know, move forward very fast. And one thing that's not talked about is we live in a multicultural society now. And I think if this year or next year, um, you know, the, the majority of babies being born are going to be multicultural. And so a lot of, there's a lot of medical tourism going on right now where you have people going back to the, uh, for care. I, they could be of Filipino descent and they're going back to the Philippines for care. And there's no cultural or language barriers. There's no question about the quality of care or the doctors. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the employers and insurance companies aren't realizing that um, for, for multicultural people, this is something that they would actually like to do if they would actually provide the coverage. Yeah, and it's wrong to believe that the very best health care in the world exclusively is available in this country. That is correct. And, and a lot of the... Um, the tests on uh, for new drugs, new medication, and new medical procedures are all being done overseas. And uh, you know, to give you a kind of couple examples of people who have traveled overseas for medical tourism, mm -hmm. you know, Steve Steve Jobs of Apple, he went to Europe for stem cell treatment, and he's somebody that he could have built the most amazing first class hospital in his backyard and brought in the top surgeons, but he went overseas because he knows that. There is advanced medicine over there. Farrah Fawcett went overseas. Uh, Peyton Manning went overseas. Um, so for people who really know this is something that's, that's going on on a constant basis, it's just the average American doesn't know this is available to them. Yeah, and the experimental procedures, I, I want to touch on that, too, and, and build on that. Uh, that was a focus on the, the piece this morning on CBS This Morning uh, about a woman dealing with arthritis and stem cell treatments that were being done, that she had great hopes for what this treatment was going to do for her. And one of the observations that was made is that if nothing else, considering the total cost to her, uh, if nothing else, she has herself a wonderful vacation while she's there in many of these communities as well. So you get the vacation aspect of it, you get uh, great medical treatment, and it's saving people a whole lot of money in the process. Yeah, the vacation part, it really is a core part of the experience. Um, you know, there's some doctors who say we don't like the term medical tourism because people aren't going to engage in tourism. But the reality is they are. 90, we've done some, um, some research and 90% of Americans who are going overseas are engaging in tourism. They're eating out at restaurants, uh, they're going shopping. Um, there's a documentary we did of an American who went for a double knee replacement to Costa Rica from Orlando, never had left the country, didn't have a passport, and he went on an aerial tram tour in Costa Rica over the jungle forest, and it was something he always wanted to do. So you're able to, because of the significant cost savings, you're really able to afford to experience something that you might not otherwise experience. And if you're actually going for dental care, if you're getting dental implants somewhere, you're going to be stuck there, even if it's in the U.S. for, for a period of time. It could be a couple of days, it could be a week or two. Mm -hmm. And dental vacation is something that people are really enjoying. Uh, Jonathan Edelheit is my guest. He's the CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. Where do you advise people to go to get more information about this and uh, maybe bring it up with their employer, with their insurance company? Um, they can go, we have a consumer website, medicaltourism.com, 
and uh, it's www.medicaltourism.com. And on there, we also have some uh, healthcare travel guides, so kind of like a Frommers or Floaters, uh, but they're specifically for medical care for Americans and other consumers who are looking to travel for care. What about business owners that are listening right now that are saying, well, I, this may be a great way of me being able to afford to provide health insurance for my employees to explore the possibilities of uh, bringing this around as well. Where would you recommend they go? Um, they, they can go to the NCA's website, which is medicaltourismassociation.com. I also invite them to call me personally. And then we actually are putting on, we put on the world's largest medical tourism conference each year where we bring in the hospitals and doctors overseas. It's going to be November 3rd to the 6th in Las Vegas. And any employers who are listening who are interested in this, mm -hmm. I'm happy to extend them a complimentary pass to come and meet the hospitals and the doctors and understand this whole industry and the opportunities there are. How much less expensive could it be to provide care to an employee if they were to incorporate this as compared to limiting health care to only being available in the States? Oh, it can be very significant. Um, you know, if they have an employee who's getting a uh, hip replacement, um, that might cost them $50,000 um, with their health insurance plan now, where it could be $15,000 overseas. And I think that the uh, example of HSM, uh, they saved $10 million over five years, and they're not a large company. So that, that has a significant impact on a company's bottom line. All right. One more time, website again for individuals to go to to get more information? Is www.medicaltourism.com. And for business owners that are listening right now? www.medicaltourismassociation.com. Excellent. Uh, Jonathan Edelheit, my guest, CEO of the Medical Tourism Association, joining us on the 84 Lumber Project Professionals Newsline. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You have yourself a great evening. Uh, I don't know about you. I would do this. Absolutely. I'm not saying that I would go to any hospital in any country. But would I explore the idea of going to a medical facility that has an affiliation with top-notch medical facilities in this country, like the Cleveland Clinic, like Johns Hopkins, to go to a five-star resort atmosphere type medical facility, get top-notch care from doctors and many of them trained here in the States, get it there, save a lot of money in the process, have a very comfortable personable experience why not why would you not take advantage of this and from a business owner's perspective my goodness it, it, trying to figure out a way of ensuring that you can continue to provide health insurance to your employees uh, and, and coverage because it, it, it not only is it the law but it's also an issue of being able to help retain good employees as well um, why wouldn't you want to make this available you don't force it on people you just give it to them as a choice. I think it's a win-win.